Today we are going to show you how to install laminate flooring in this room. This is a 12 by 10 bedroom. I think it is called a uh, gray oak. So it's a wood simulated gray wood look. So let's get right into it. All right, so here's the room now with the, the wood planks in here. Now these have already been soaking in the environment here for 48 hours. And so what we're putting in here is silver oak color. And you can see here the rating is AC4, which means uh, heavy residential or light commercial. So what we're going to show you today is just a quick way to install it. And if you want more details, we have our other video on how to install laminate flooring that goes into much more details about prepping the floor and everything. But for this, we're just going to show you how to put some quick and dirty laminate down. So for the first row, you can see we have three planks that were just kind of dry fitting right here. And you can see that you'd be left with uh, too small of a piece at the corner here. But also, another mucky wrench the manufacturer throws in for you is they want no piece to be less than 16 inches. And so they tell you that if you're going to end up with a piece smaller than 16 inches here at the end, that you have to cut that first piece down at the beginning. So what we're going to do now is figure out, um, let's figure out a 16 inch cut. So we'll move all of these up here to figure out 16 inches to make a, a cut at the end here. And then we'll have to adjust the length of that first plank. Okay, so there is our 16 inch space that we left at the end of the first row. And now we have one plank, two planks, and we're going to have to cut this first plank here. And then remember, we're going to be putting a transition piece right here. So you have to be able to figure out how to cut this thing to allow it to expand underneath the transition piece. See, we know when we put this T-mold piece down, it's gonna bridge between this tile and the laminate floor here, see? So we have to cut it so that it will be underneath. See where that overhang is right there? So we just have to cut it. But how are we going to cut it around the door? Well, I like to use my little contour tool here, and these are kind of nice. It gives you the exact size, shape, and everything. It, it follows the contour of whatever you need to cut up against, see? So when we pull it around here and show it, you can see it's got the exact contour around the door frame. And then we'll put it right here and trace it on the wood, okay? But just one thing to keep in mind, we have to back off. So we had to cut around the corner there. The molding is in place there. To, uh, that's our reference molding to just tell us if we have the right distance. So now we're going to take the second piece here. And you look at, you always want this, this uh, ledge here to stick out on the right so that the overhang on your second piece will come in. And you notice how this one here has the underlayment already on the bottom of the plank, which is nice. It saves you a lot of time. You don't have to roll out rolls of underlayment. So it comes in right here. You line it up. And you lay it down. And they tell you not to hammer these. The manufacturer specifically says do not hammer these. So the first two or three rows are going to be the most difficult because they're going to be loose and sort of moving around and stuff until we get all the spacers set in here and keep them three eighths of an inch away from the, the, uh, the wall. And then once we're out a couple of rows, we'll put a few boxes of the wood floor right on here to weigh it down so that it won't move from there. All right, now for the last piece, we don't ever measure, I don't use my tape measure for that. What we do is we take the piece and we put it in the orientation that it's going to be in. Then you flip it end over end, just like this. Lay it down, okay? And you figure three eighths inch from the wall because that's the spacing that the manufacturer wants us to adhere to. And so once you have that set, you come over here and you look right down here where it's gonna meet up to the other plank and you mark it, you make that mark right there. That's where we're going to cut our piece. So that way when we're done, we know it's going to be exactly that long. And then this remainder piece will start the second Okay, so there we go, our first row is down. 
And don't worry about the fact that we don't have the spacers there yet. It, it doesn't really help us at this point until we have two or three rows going to get everything uh, set up there. We just want to get the pieces down and working. Okay, so the problem we have here is now we lay this piece down to be the second row, but the problem is, is now we're too close to this previous line here, and they don't want you to be any closer than eight inches. So what we could do is, um, and most board manufacturers, by the way, they tell you to be far as far away as the width of the board. So in this case, this board's uh, about six inches, almost you know, six and a half inches. They want you to be eight inches though. So we want to make sure that we're eight inches away from that. And that would put us right about here. Okay. So we can now go ahead and do that and still make sure that we have a minimum of a 16 inch length board. So it can get a little tricky to make sure you're satisfying the requirements here. And we do, because this will be approximately uh, 26 inches by the time we're done. Okay, so now we've move the molding out of the way and we're going to line this up perfectly with the first piece and click them down and so then we can just go ahead and start laying down full pieces until we get to the end of this hey one thing to remember you always want to make sure you're grabbing from multiple boxes to make them look more random because if you were to lay down a bunch of planks that all came from the same box from the same lot they could look the same and then you'll see another group of planks that look the same and it'll look like a checkerboard pattern. <clears throat> you don't want that. You want them to look random. All right, so we've completed the first two rows, and I now have the end piece from the end of the second row to bring it over here to start the third row. And we have the same issue again, so we want to make sure that we're eight inches from line to line there, so we can cut this piece out like this. And then we want to make sure we're satisfying the other row that we're at least 16 inches long, which we are. All right, so here we are. Uh, the next day, if you remember, we used to have a green wall here. The painters came in and painted, so we had to have a little work stoppage there. So we have our first three rows in, one, two, three, and then the boxes are on top of them. So everything's perfect now. They're nice and tight and absolutely perfectly straight and weighed down. So now this fourth row here that we're dry fitting right now should click in perfectly. So if you recall, the pattern we had there, we didn't start with a full length piece on the first row. That's about... 75%, that's about two thirds, and then the one under it's a half, and uh, that's, it, that's it right there. So what we wanna do now is we wanna start with a full length piece here. I wanna break that pattern, and then we're going to do these two pieces here, but then look what happens at the end. I can't just end that piece and do a little stub. So what I have to do here on this piece, we have to do what's called a butt joint. So here's the piece here, and I'm going to uh, cut it right here. See that line that we made there? We got to make sure that we're eight inches away from the previous line there to um, make sure we're conforming to that rule. So we'll cut it there and that means we have to cut another piece that's going to be about half a plank. And But they will both be smooth because if I cut this right here, there won't be a ledge like this for the board to sit on. So we'll just have a half piece here and a half piece here and they'll be abutted and that's fine. A butt joint is okay because it'll be held in place on this side and on this side. And once the whole floor is in, everything will be just perfect. You can do a butt joint every you know, few rows or so. I try not to do them more than uh, four or five rows, every four or five rows. Okay, now we take that measurement there for that piece. Okay, that row is now done. Okay, so now with that last piece in on the fourth row, the cut piece now comes up here and starts the fifth row up here. So now that we have four rows on here, we have enough weight down on the floor, we can start pulling the planks from these boxes here, mix them up, make them random, and start continuing across the floor here. Well, here we are, we have about 80% of them laid out, and what we did was we just dry fitted the last 
four or five rows here and we're going to quickly mark and cut all of them and get them into place. Okay, so we just cut this piece here on the table saw. Table saws are great for cutting out the notch outs like this because you cut this way and then you cut this way. This will go for the door frame, for the closet door. Okay, so now that we have uh, the floor about 95% done, we're on the very last row here. And what typically happens on your last row is you end up with uh, maybe half a piece or so. So here's our plank and obviously it's not going to fit. So what we do is, you got to remember, you have to leave three eighths of an inch space up against the, the wall there, and then we're going to rip it. This is called a rip cut when you go straight down the plank, the whole length of the plank here. So these pieces will end up being probably close to two inches wide when, we, when we're done cutting them, and we have to do this whole row like that. So we do that out on the table saw. So here's that nice strange cut, all made to go around the little door jam piece. Well, here's the main course of the bedroom completed here. And then as we look into the closet here, we can see we got it with just a couple of small cuts and most of the rest were these pieces here. And surprisingly, out of 13 cases of wood, this is all that we were left with. So we guessed pretty exact. We didn't have to go back to buy any more boxes, and we didn't have to return any boxes either. Now, as you look across the floor here, you'll notice where all of our cut lines are here. You notice how we try not to create a repeating pattern of any type, so it looks very random as you look across the floor where all of our cuts are. That's the way you really want to cut your your floor planks when you're doing wood floors or when you're installing laminate flooring like this. Um, don't do what I see other people do where they do the H pattern where it's it's like you would see like this line and then you'd see it again there and then you'd see it again there and all the way across. So too many people do that and it just looks very unsightly and it's distracting and you see it immediately as soon as you walk in. So you can see right here at the beginning, there's your first three planks here. And then I switch to a full one. And then theoretically you would start the pattern over again, but I try to go at least four or five rows before having to repeat again. And uh, so sometimes that may mean that when you get to the end of a row over here, that you don't take that cut piece. It might mean that you sacrifice a whole piece to make another cut piece of a different length here than you've already used. That way you're not repeating the pattern. So you can see here with this one, we went with a medium sized piece here uh, instead of um, other sizes like smaller ones like back here. So that's what you want to try to keep in mind to randomize your, your planks is to try to not get any kind of noticeable pattern starting and it's a little bit of a trick, but and it does not waste a lot of wood like people think because you can use whatever pieces you cut, you can use them for other places. So I use them all further down the line here and here and like over here. And then I use some in the closets where nobody cares, the back parts of a closet where no one cares. That's what you do with those pieces. Okay, so now we have our moldings in place there, our T-molding that transitions the wood floor here to the tile floor and then as you see here we've installed the baseboard so we always come in with five and a half inch tall baseboard to replace the the skinny little two inch baseboards that the builders give you so this looks a lot nicer a lot classier and we use this profile quite a bit here 
Now as we look into the closet here, you can see we, we didn't do baseboard in here. We just did a little bit of shoe rail in here. But the closet came out pretty nice as well. And we hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up below. That tells us that you like us. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and click on the bell icon. That will tell you every time we get a video uploaded. And we hope you enjoyed this one and we will see you next time.